Have you ever wanted to become unstoppably awesome, like the protagonists in your favourite video games? Me too, but let's face it, most of us aren't doing what we need to do to make it happen. We're putting heaps of time and effort into levelling up inside video games, while neglecting our real life. Which is why in this video, I'm going to show you how you can take this concept straight out of the games and start levelling up your real life character right now. The first thing we need to cover is how much they parallel each other. When compared to the real world, games tend to be overly fantastical and unrealistic. But when it comes to progression and improving, they're remarkably similar. So we're going to break down the different elements involved in leveling up inside games, and then look at how you can apply each of these concepts to your own life. Let's begin. The first thing we need to look at is experience. Yep, we all know how that works. You do something, you get a bunch of points, and if you collect enough of them, you'll get that glorious level up. Now the finer details can differ from game to game, but in general, we can get even more specific than just experience. Most games, and in my opinion, the most well-balanced games, force you to collect relevant experience. You can only improve a specific skill or style by actually using it. In Grand Theft Auto V, you only improve your driving ability by driving. And in Skyrim, you only improve your alchemy skill by making potions. This translates perfectly into the real world. If you want to increase your productivity and start getting more done at work, there's not much point practicing your table tennis backhand. That experience isn't relevant. You'll only get relevant experience by spending time on things that directly connect to your productivity. This makes applying this to your own life abundantly clear. If you want to level up in a particular area, you need to put time and effort into that area. You need to build relevant experience. And we've all heard the 10,000 hour rule, haven't we? In order to gain mastery at something, you need to put in 10,000 hours of dedicated practice. Now while the message is sound, you do need to put in the time in order to level up, the rule as a whole isn't necessarily accurate. The big flaw with the 10,000 hour rule is that it doesn't take into account the quality of each hour. It's possible for two people to put in the exact same amount of time and be at completely different levels. Simply put, there are both efficient and inefficient ways to level up. In a game environment, you might be able to level up your character just by doing some fishing, but it's probably slow. It's almost certainly not as efficient as slaughtering monsters and completing quests. The same is true in life. Spending dedicated practice time with a coach will almost certainly improve your tennis skills faster than mindlessly hitting a ball against a wall. You should always look for the most efficient route to leveling up your skills. To that end, here's some tips to keep in mind. Make sure you have some form of guidance. If possible, make this a teacher that can give you direct feedback but it could also be a book, a video, a course, or whatever, as long as you aren't trying to progress blindly. Have goals. Know exactly what you want to improve and measure your progress as you go. Be consistent. Practicing for 10 minutes every day is better than one hour per week, simply because resting and sleeping between sessions allows your brain to remember and learn more effectively. Next, we have difficulty. Ever noticed how as you level up, progress and become more capable, the challenges also seem to get harder? This is by design. After all, if it got too easy, you'd probably lose interest. This is exactly why difficulty partners with relevance to help determine the amount of experience you receive within a game. Pursuing relevant objectives is important, but so is having to struggle to progress. A well-balanced game will reward you for pushing your limits and remove those rewards if you decide to play it safe within your comfort zone. And progress occurs the same way in real life. Most people stop progressing and never level up because they don't push themselves into that zone of discomfort where you're getting real useful experience. The key to leveling yourself up is to find a sweet spot in your practice. If it's too easy, you won't learn much, if anything at all. But it's also important that it's not too hard. After all, there's a certain point where difficulty just becomes overwhelming and frustrating. If you want to learn to swim, there's no point skydiving into the middle of the Pacific Ocean, but you do need to be willing to get wet. So think about an area of your life that you'd like to level up in and pay attention to where you start to feel discomfort or difficulty. If you can start regularly edging into that zone without overwhelming yourself, you'll start leveling up like crazy. Next, we'll discuss how being at a lower level allows you to progress more quickly. 
quite straightforward really. It takes less time to progress from level 1 to level 2 than it does from level 27 to level 28. This occurs in video games because the early levels exist to teach you the ropes and the foundations that you need to continue while still rewarding you for the progress you've made. After all, if you were immediately thrust into difficulty and punished for your mistakes, you probably wouldn't stick around. It's just good game design. But it's actually completely true in real life as well. If you have zero knowledge of a skill, then reading a book or watching a video can dramatically magnify your overall skill level. Somebody who's never played the piano before can simply pick up a piano book and start learning some basic chords. Their piano level improves quickly and dramatically as a result. Within days or even hours, they could be 10 times more skilled with the piano than they were before. But the person who's been playing piano for 20 years has to put an insane amount of time and effort in to see even minuscule 1% improvements. Another example would be fitness. Somebody who's overweight and out of shape can improve their physical fitness dramatically by hitting the gym a few times per week and getting some walking in each day. In contrast, if an ultra marathon runner wants to improve his cardiovascular endurance or his race times, he needs to put in hours and hours of grueling training. Simply put, the better you are, the more effort it takes to reach the next level. And this is an incredibly empowering notion for beginners, because it means that all you need to do is get started. Just putting a little effort in will have you smashing through those first few levels in no time at all. It also means you can have at least some novice level competence in a wide range of skills without a gigantic time investment. You can dedicate a weekend to learning a skill and come away with some irreplaceable foundational experience. Pretty soon you'll be that guy that somehow knows a little bit about everything. Next, let's talk about what you unlock as you level up. Anyone who's ever played a video game knows what I mean. You level up and you're expecting a shiny new number, a skill point, and some awesome new abilities. It's designed this way because we get that awesome hit of dopamine that quickly has us addicted to the feeling of the level up. Now imagine if you had that same addictive feeling when you improved in real life. Things would be way different, right? Unfortunately, real life improvements tend to be much harder to notice. For one, they're more abstract. You don't suddenly learn a new ability but you also just don't get blinking lights on your screen telling you how amazing you are. But of course, the improvements do still exist. It might come in the form of increased confidence, maybe you're able to complete a certain task faster or with less thought, freeing you up to focus on something else, or maybe you've had some kind of breakthrough or realization that allows you to perform better. If you're able to start noticing these, your brain will start rewarding you with dopamine hits and your motivation will soar. To make this happen, I have two suggestions. First, think about your rewards in advance. Visualize and write down what you expect to happen as you continue to improve at a specific skill. How will you get faster or more efficient? What will change in your process? Second, have some kind of system to track your results. For example, I'm currently doing a course on speed reading, and after each class, the instructor tells us to actually time ourselves and track how many words we're reading per minute. That way I've got my reading speed written down for each day and I immediately notice when I've improved. Once you start thinking about your level ups and actually noticing them as they occur, you'll learn to associate improvement with excitement and enjoy it just as much as your in-game level ups. So for clarity, here are the key points for leveling up in real life. Make sure you're getting relevant, useful experience. Find your difficulty sweet spot. Don't procrastinate. Remember that you'll breeze through the early levels and get started straight away. Take advantage of this early progress and become a novice in a bunch of different skills and focus on and track your improvements as you go. So, if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, watch this one as well. It'll be right up your alley. But first, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video.